All right, it's time for another math easy solution. Time to discuss another uh, video on inverse hyperbolic trig functions, two logarithms, and basically in this video, look at inverse hyperbolic cosecant uh, of x right here and show that it can be written as natural log or ln of one divided by x plus square root one plus x squared all divided by absolute value of x. And for the domain, this is gonna be x all real numbers, except x cannot equal to zero. And just a side note, uh, if you wanna see all related videos to the one I'm doing right now, everything's in the video links below. If you wanna learn more info about hyperbolic functions, etc., and, and inverse functions and everything else in between, it's all in the video links below in the description. So now before I get to the proof, I just wanna quickly show how the graphs would look like for Basically, the blue is equal to a uh, hyperbolic sine of x right here. The red, this is just a definition by it, is written as this. And it's also, and then the red is going to be equal to uh, 1 divided by hyperbolic sine of x. And this equals to, by definition, the hyperbolic cosecant of x. And like I showed in my earlier video on inverse functions, basically, if you were to draw the y equals x line. This is gonna be y equals x line. And then the inverse of this one here is just gonna be a reflection uh, or a mirror image about this line right here. But in case this one here is gonna look something like that. Notice how this is further apart on the top here. But now when you reverse it and use this one here, because this orange one is gonna be our inverse hyperbolic uh, cosecant of x right here. As you see for the this, uh, for this the regular hyperbolic cosecant of x, there's a difference here, but now the difference for this orange one is here, and now it's closer to this one on this side, as opposed to where it originally was here. So basically it's a mirror image, uh, or reflection, so we basically flip it kind of ab about this line. And this, this is just uh, another way of writing this exact formula right here, which I'll prove in a bit, and I'll show you why this and this are the same thing. I'll, sh I'll show you to get that part right now. So the first step in the proof is let's say we let y equals 2 inverse hyperbolic cosecant of x right here. And then basically like I showed in my earlier videos, this is the same thing as writing for inverse functions. This is just what it means. It just means x is equal to hyperbolic cosecant of x, I mean of y, yeah, of y right here. So basically it just means you switch x and y's and now you solve for the new y. That's what inverse means. You just put inversely solve this. So basically we write it like this one out and now, or you could write it as basically x is equal to um, one divided by hyperbolic sine of x. And now we could uh, rewrite all of this as basically write this on the, on the left side, bring this to the right. So we get hyperbolic cosecant of x, I mean or hyperbolic sine of x equals two, one divided by x. And now this, by definition, this just equals two e to the y minus e to the negative y all divided by two. So now what I'm gonna do the next step is I'm gonna multiply the two on both sides. So we cancel this and then basically move everything to the right side. So we'll have basically zero is equal to, and zero is equal to uh, e to the y minus e to the negative y, and then minus that uh, the left side, which was two divided by x, so we times it by two. So we have this one right here, and now the trick, like I showed in my other proofs for uh, converting log, uh, hyperbolic functions to logarithms, you multiply both sides by e to the y to show that it looks like a um, quadratic formula. It's a pretty ingenious method that my calculus book has. So we multiply both sides, so we get on left side to be zero, anything, anything times by zero, zero. So now this one's gonna be now e to the two y. And now this part right here, we're gonna go e to the negative y times it by e to the y. And then minus now two to the x, two divided by x times e to the y. Now this part right here, this is just, well, negative e to the y uh, time, this is, yeah, with these power, uh, with power functions like this, so like I showed in my earlier video, they just add up the powers of that are the same base. So this adds up, so we get negative e to the zero, these cancel, so e to the zero, and this just equals to, e to the zero is equal to one, so it equals just to negative one right here. And now I'm just gonna rearrange this, uh, how it's written, and also write it in you know, just a slightly different format. So we get e to the y, let's put a square here, this means the same thing as e to the two y. And now we get minus, I'll put this one first to make it look like a quadratic, to the x times now e to the y. Put this in bracket, 
uh, just to make it separate from everything else. And now this is minus one. That's this part right here. So we have this minus one. Now this looks like a quadratic formula. It's exactly the same. If we were to look at a quadratic formula, yeah, if we look at a quadratic function here, I wrote the formula down. If we have a function like zero equals ax squared plus bx plus c, which is the same thing here, except now our uh, e to the y is gonna be our x right here. So this is, this is replacing e to the y with x. So basically this looks exactly like this and we know that the quadratic formula is this one right here. See proof of this also in the video links below. So now we can solve for e to the y using this formula because we know in this case, uh, so in our case we have basically a is equal to one, that's this right here, there's nothing in front. B is equal to negative two divided by x and c is equal to negative one right here. So now we could solve the formula e to the y is equal to negative uh, b, which is gonna be two divided by x, plus or minus, now we have square root of, I mean, yeah, square root of b squared, which is four divided by x squared. Now we have a negative four a, which is one, we can ignore that, negative, then times it by c, which is negative one, so we just put a po positive. Two negatives make a positive, and then this all divided by two times a, which is one. So we just two divided by two. So now here we could factor out uh, the fours out, and this one will look, this square root part will look like, basically we take the four out, this will be one divided by x squared plus one. So we take it out, and then we get square root the four, that equals to basically two, and now we have this, uh, Actually, I just wrote it down here, it's basically two times uh, square root one divided by x squared plus one. So we have this right here. So if we write that down, we get e to the y is equal to two, to the two divided by x plus or minus two square root, and now this one here, one over x squared plus one, all divided by two. So now the twos cancel. So we cancel the twos out, just divide it all out. So e to the y is equal to one divided by x plus or minus square root one divided by x squared plus one. So now this one, if we multiply by the common denominator of x squared, so we get basically x squared divided by x squared. Uh, we get, now we can add up the, the tops and we'll get e to the y is equal to, yeah, it will equal to one divided by x plus or minus uh, square root one plus x squared all divided by x squared, because we just multiply this, we have a common denominator on this one only, that's the only thing we're multiplying it on, add up common denominator, so we get this answer right here, but in, in this case, yeah, in this case if we square root the bottom here, we'll get basically e to the y is equal to one divided by x plus or minus, the top will be basically one plus square root of x squared, yeah, I mean, uh, uh, yeah, square root of one plus x squared, and now this is gonna be square root of an x squared, but like this one I also showed in my earlier videos that it's because basically x squared is gonna be greater than zero for all values of x, so x are greater than or equal to zero, but in this case we can't have divided by zero. So that it, it has to be basically, um, when you square root it, so we're gonna get square root of x squared is equal to, well, the, the square root and, and squared cancel, so it'd be x, but this is greater than equal to zero. So we have to put an absolute value in front. So it's saying that it has to be positive. So this is positive, it's gonna be absolute value of x. So we have that part right here. So we get now this form with the absolute value of x, but now there's a plus or minus, but we also know that e to the y is greater than zero. Because, well, this is an exponential function, so if we have a function, let's say y is the horizontal axis, we'll have it like this. This is e to the y, so it never goes to zero. So it's always greater than uh, zero, the, the, the function. So if it's always greater than zero, and we look at, you know, when we look at this top one right here, this is basically the same thing as this one divided by x, except this is always positive. And this part right here, one plus x squared, is basically, uh, yeah, this is the same thing as the one, but we're adding up an x squared. So it's always gonna be higher than this one plus x. So we'll, we'll say one plus one divided by x, is basically gonna be less than um, this one right here, one plus x squared. Put an equal to, I'm not sure if it's, uh, yeah, it's less than equal to, I'm, I'm not sure if they can even equal each other. So this is always less than it, so if we have a, a negative, if, so if we use this negative one, if we're subtracting a larger number from a smaller number, we'll get less than zero, and that's not possible, so this is the only acceptable one right here. 
So only thing is acceptable is the plus. So basically we get e to the y is equal to one plus, I mean one divided by x plus square root one plus x squared all divided by absolute value of x. And as, yeah, so now what we could do is basically ln both sides. So we could write ln e to the y is equal to, yeah, basically ln on the right side and left side equals to one divided by x uh, squared, at one plus x squared all divided by absolute value of x. When we have this, now we could apply the log, pro I mean ln or log properties. The y goes down and then we're gonna have a ln e right here. So this part right here equals to y ln e, but this equals to one right here. So ln e equals to one based on the properties, and you can see that also in the video link below. So now we'll have y equals to ln of one divided by x plus square root one plus x squared, all divided by x right here. And once again, x cannot equal to zero. So this is exactly, we've proven this formula right here. And yeah, so this is what we've just proven. And so that's anyways, that's all for today. If you learned from this video, you can download these exact notes in the Dropbox link below. And I also wanted to point out, yeah, so once again, so notice how there's a one plus x squared divided by uh, x squared inside the square root. This is just another way of writing this function, which uh, basically when you rearrange it, we had that square root of an x squared. This, basically, this, we already, I just showed it earlier why it's that. Anyways, that's all for today. Thanks for watching and stay tuned for another math easy solution.